Right, so we're in our code editor. We're gonna be using requests HTML for this. So I'm gonna do from requests HTML and we're gonna import HTML session. This is my sort of go-to web scraping program at the moment. Um, if you want to need to get this installed, you will do pip install and it's requests dash HTML like this with this dash here, but when we import it, it's like this one. So what we wanna do now is we want to actually get our session set up. We're gonna use a session object to actually make the request to the server. This is just best practice. I just call mine S is equal to our HTML session like that. And we need the parentheses on the end here. The next thing we need to do is get the URL. We'll grab that in just a second. And then we're gonna have R is equal to S dot get our URL. So all we're doing here is we're gonna use our session object that we've created to actually perform a get request on the URL and we're gonna store that in our R, which is our response variable. So if we look at the website, I've actually already got it open here. Um, this is an HTML table, even though it does look a little bit more dynamic, it's not. Uh, and we can see that we have our header row and then each of the individual pieces of information here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the data from this table and we're going to return it into a JSON file. So we're gonna want the headers to match every piece of data as it goes in as a dictionary or, and comes out as JSON at the end. So we can actually sort of build something else with this uh, if we wanted to, as opposed to, you know, just taking this table and turning it into a CSV file, which is possibly useful in some cases, but less in others. So I'm just gonna grab the URL for this and we'll come back to our code. I'm gonna put that in there. So the first thing that you always want to do is you want to print out your r.html.html. In this case, that's how you do it here. So you can actually see what your program is getting back, what your code is returning. So you wanna have a scan through here and just sort of check to see if you can see that information that you're looking for. Okay, so there, it's right at the top here, we can see it is here. And if we, if we look, we can see the, there's some information here. So we know that you can get it out. Now, if you don't actually have if you're in there, you just get a load of stuff that talks about you need to have JavaScript enabled, and this method isn't gonna work. You're gonna need to go a different way about it. What we wanna do now is we want to actually find that table. So I'm gonna call my variable table. I'm gonna do r.html.find, and I'm just gonna search the whole page, the whole HTML for a table. And then I'm gonna do is print the length of the list that comes back. So find in request HTML will always return a list so we can actually just print the length of that list out and see how many tables we get back we're only going to get one table so judging by what we see on the page there is only one table here and i guess that kind of makes sense as when we look at this there aren't any extra tables in some cases you might find that some information in the header or the footer is actually also in a table so this will help you narrow it down and what you can do here is you can do first is equal to true like this so, so you get the, uh, the first response only or you can actually index it because this is a list. So now this won't actually work because it's a list but what we can do is we can just print table out and it will actually show us the element. So I'll run that and you'll see we get this element here. That's the table. This is exactly what we were after. And if you check over here, you'll see that the table actually has this class and all of this extra um, attributes there. All right, so from here, we could actually print out the HTML of the table and have a look at that. Where you can see it all there, although this is not actually that useful for us. Um, so, but we know that it is all there and there is actually data in it, so that's good to know. So what we want to do is we want to really think about how we're going to get through all this information. So to do that, I'm going to check out one of the rows. Now, if you look at this, we'll find that we have a header and a body and each one of these has this tr which is a row table row and with inside that table row there are loads of td which is a cell there we go down you can see them all here they just are highlighted on the left as i go over it on the right hand side now this one here which has the like the green dots um we can't get anything really from here because they're not easily anyway because there's no um there's no actual text, so we could pull the title, but that's just going to be a, quite unuseful, really, uh, for this purpose. So we're actually going to not get this last column. We're going to get everything else, though. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to find the table, and we want to find all the rows. And we want to loop through all of the rows and grab the data from all of the cells. So that should be nice and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it in a for loop to start with, and we'll do for row 
in table.find tr. So this is our row. So then what we're going to do is we'll just print out row.text and we'll run this. Of course, it's at the bottom. Come on. There we go. So you can see that we've got all of the information is just coming through. So this is all of the cells. If I go right to the top, you'll notice that even though the header and the body are separated, because we are asking for every row, we actually get the header information as well. So we can actually um, use this and take that part off. So what we want to do is now we want to go through and actually extract this. Now we want these into a list really because we want a list of each sort of one each each lot each row to be a list so here so this would be one of our lists so we want to make sure that that happens now you can sort of keep going through and expanding out like this but it's much easier to use list comprehension so list comprehension is a way of kind of like writing a for loop but in one line it does look quite confusing at the start but it's actually uh, quite simple and really powerful when you get used to it. Uh, so I'll explain exactly what I'm doing. So it's table, I'm just gonna call mine table data. So we need to have, this is like our list. So we're gonna have our list comprehension in here. So you kind of have to think backwards from the end. So what do we want the last thing to be? Well, we want to get the text. So we want the cell text. Now I didn't go any further down here because we're gonna do it here, but I'm gonna say c.text and that's gonna represent the text for the cell. But to do that, we need to do for c in our row.find, and we're gonna fill all this out in a minute, TD. So this is basically the next step that we would have done here. We would have done uh, for C in row.find TD, we would have done this, right? So this would have given us each of the uh, text there. So that would have given us each of this. All we're doing is we're putting this all into one line here like this. But because we need to do it for each one of these as well, we need to put this all in its own brackets and then do for row in table dot find our TR our table row here. Okay, so that basically this this lot here, but put on to one line. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to remove that. Let's go ahead and print out our table data and see what we get. Table data. Okay, so now we're starting to get something useful. You can see that we actually have a blank list here, but this is the first one, there we go. And this is the part of the information that I showed you. This is the last six thing here, which we're not getting any information for. So one easy way to do that would be to just not get this piece here. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna, because this is returning a list, well, what we can do is we can actually use a slicer to remove it from the, uh, the entry. So if you look uh, at this one here, You'll see we have the entry there. We can um, put this on here. If we put it in the end, we do everything up to, but not including the last one, which is what the minus one is. So if I run that now, you'll see that we have everything except for the last entry, which was blank. So that's good, that sorted that out. But we also have this blank list here. That's because it is picking up the um, header rows, but we're not actually picking it up here because of the, the, the TD that we've got. So what we want to do, uh, sorry, I just explained that because of the TD, but in the header, it's called TH, which is why we're getting this blank list here. So all I'm going to do here is exactly the same thing, just the other way around. I'm going to slice the first one off. Um, so we'll run that again and you'll see we now have our clean list of lists with all of the uh, row data stored. So now we have the table data. We need to get the headers. So we're going to do almost exactly the same thing except instead of the TD, we're gonna get the TH, which is the table table header, so we'll just call this one header. And if we look at here, you see it's TD, we're gonna change this to TH. We still want rows, we still want rows, if I hover over it, look. We still want rows, because it's a TR, but these are TH, these are the table header rows here, the table header cells, as opposed to further down, we have the TD, which is the data cells. We just need to get rid of the, uh, I'll make this a bit smaller, no. We just need to get rid of this slice on the end because that's not gonna do us any good. Because when we run this, you'll see that we have it the other way around. Our first list has the information in and we just get a load of blank lists afterwards because there are no more TH tags. So to sort this out, I'm just gonna slice, but the other way around. 
Uh, not that, sorry, we need that way around. There we go. So now we just have this one list like that. So we've successfully got the data and then the headers. And now we just need to put these together. And that's where zip comes in to hand. So what zip will do is it will take two lists and it will essentially zip them together. So it will assign them together like this. And from our zipped object, we can then create a dictionary. But as we've only got one header row and multiple data rows, we need to loop through that to create them over and over again. So this is the this is where this kind of happens all together. This is where it kind of like starts to make a bit more sense. So I'm going to say res for just results. We're going to create a dictionary with our zipped object. So we're using zip here and dict outside. Now we've got this inside square brackets because we're going to have a list of dictionaries. This is more like you know um, you might have. Uh, from an API and it's a better way to it's, it's the best way we're going to use to structure our data so we need to give it the table header here and then we're going to say t because outside here we're going to do for t in table data and again list comprehension see right we're splitting it all out so we're saying we want to do we want to zip together the table header and t for t in our table data and this is going to give us our results and this is going to give us the dictionary back here so if we just print our result here now we should get a nice list of uh, dictionaries that contain the number the team uh, I think that's played one drawn lost four goals against uh, difference and points total and then we have the next one along so we've successfully grabbed each row and turned it using the header into a dictionary and we now have a list of dictionaries now you could stop there but I'm going to save this to a JSON file just so we can see it a bit neater so I'm going to import JSON at the top and instead of printing it I'm going to do with open because our context manager table.json and we want this W and then we'll do uh, json.dump s the uh, res and I needed to do this as F, so we have our file object like this. So all we're doing is using our context manager. This is our file name. We need it to be right. Our file object is F. And then we're using JSON dump S dumps dump the string uh, from this uh, variable here, which we've got into our file. So let's run that. And we shouldn't use dump S because it's not a string. It's an object. We use dump. There we go. And now we have our table.json here. And if I use VS Code, please, to format that, you'll see that we have all of our lovely structured data here. We have a list of dictionaries for each and every one. The, all the headers that we, we wanted from the, the table headers are all supplied. You can see as we go through, we have all of this information here. Now this information looks an awful lot like it might have come out of an API. And this is where we're going to take this data next time around. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our own uh, API for our per for personal use probably that's going to be able to give us all of the um, information for the league tables in this structured format and the good thing about this website is is you can make it work for any of the other leagues because they are all in the same way format so if i just grab the url for this one and come back here let's put that in and instead of table we'll just call this championship table and let's go and run that now there it is format the document and there we go that's the next lot of data so this is quite a fun way to actually take information from the web and then do something else with it because we've transformed it into a json file into a into a dictionary that we could then actually do something else with as opposed to just having what would essentially be a csv dump of information so i said i did tell you i was going to show you two different ways to do this and the second way let's create a new file um, we're going to use pandas we're going to create a new file here. I'm going to import pandas as pd. And we have two things that we need to do here. We can just do df for our data frame is equal to pd.readhtml. This is really useful for table data. Um, let's grab this URL here. This is really useful for table data. There are some downsides though. 
um, and let's just print out our data frame here um, and there we go there's our there's our table it's done everything for us you can see that we have this not a number last six because there is no information there you will see though that there's a square, a square bracket here and that's because this also returns a list so you would need to index this again if I run it you'll see that we don't have it as a list now and just to get this to be the same sort of format that we did here you want to do df.2 JSON. Here's your file name, our pandas table dot JSON. And you just need to do orient order, nope, orient uh, equals to records. And that should put it all right, the right way around. So let's run that. And I just need to do uh, this here. Let's just do df is equal to df like that. And there we go. There's our pandas table and format. Exactly the same way. So I guess you're probably going to ask why you would ever do it this way when you can just do it this way. And that is because if you're not really doing any analysis on the day on the data, pandas is a very heavy way of doing this. It's going to slow your apps down if you're actually trying to serve this in a different way if it's not just for personal use because this is a heavy library whereas something like request html or just requests and beautiful soup would work in a very similar way this is going to be much lighter and much quicker working with the debt with the data this is a lot more overkill so that's going to do it for this one guys hopefully you've enjoyed it if you're interested in this sort of thing i think you're going to like this video here where we talk about more things web scraping